So we've talked about generating everything from images, videos, animations, and even gone as far as turning those images into 3D animations and 3D environments. Today I want to talk about an open AI tool that absolutely nobody's talking about, and I'm not entirely sure why, because AI-generated music is here. It's actually been here for a minute, thanks to OpenAI's Jukebox, and that's what you're seeing on your screen now. Now don't worry, you don't need to be a developer, you don't need to be a coder to actually understand this or use this, and a matter of fact, we're gonna get you generating music in about five to ten minutes here. So you're gonna go down to link number one in the description down below, and it's gonna take you to this MinCrafters Jukebox GitHub repo. You don't need to do any of this code. You don't need to run it in, say, PyCharm or any local environment. All you need to do is click Open in Collab. This is going to take you to the Google Collab notebook for the Jukebox repo, and it's going to look like this. Let's go ahead and talk about what you can do with this and all the prerequisites to get it set up. The first thing we want to do on the top right is click connect. This is going to connect this notebook to our Google Drive. This is going to be where we store all of our files and where we generate or where we put our output or rather where the Google Collab Notebook puts our output when it's done generating. So we're gonna go ahead and click on Connect. It's going to give us this little notebook requires high RAM. We're gonna click on OK. Uh, too many sessions, okay, so let's go ahead and terminate the other sessions and then try to reconnect here. Very simple, any of the error messages you get, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will try and help however I can. This is gonna take just a brief moment and then it'll say connected. There's one other thing we have to do is go over here to the table of contents and click on files. The one thing we wanna do is actually upload our sample file. This is really where we train the AI to generate something within the parameters that we're looking for. As you heard in the beginning, I was trying to make some simple techno beat. So I went ahead and grabbed from pexels.com, or not pexels, but pixabay.com, I grabbed a sample file. So we're gonna go ahead and upload that file here. We're gonna upload to session storage. It's gonna open the file manager here and we have our mp3 right here. So we're gonna go ahead and upload this. Yes, that's fine. You'll see it loading on the bottom left here. Shouldn't take very long. We're gonna upload this into our files. Now we're gonna go ahead and scroll down. Check with the GPU where you were assigned by running this cell, that's perfectly fine. We're gonna leave this completely alone. If you're unaware, whenever you're using Collab or the Google Collab Notebook, you will be assigned a GPU on their backend to use so it's not utilizing your GPU. So with the local install, and I can go over the local install for this as well, you're of course gonna be using your own hardware, either your CPU or your GPU. But unless you have a minimum of like a 2080, you're not really gonna be able to generate this. And if you try, well, it's gonna take a few hours. So that's why this notebook is really cool because you're not using your own hardware to run this. Here we see a section called your lyrics. Now this is right, you can generate lyrics as well as music. While I was going for some trance beat, I just deleted all of the lyrics and left it like this. Of course, you can go over to ChatGPT and tell it to generate you lyrics for, well, whatever you're trying to generate. Okay, so let's go down. This is the model. This is where we're really gonna do our editing. This little section right here is all we need to worry about. You can play around with the model and the mode. These are gonna be up to you. These are just as they sound. The model is going to be what model you're using. If you're using lyrics or you're adding lyrics, you wanna use the 5B or 1B lyrics. Of course, the 5B lyrics is gonna be a bit more in depth. If you're not using lyrics, go ahead and switch that to 5B because if this AI is attempting to train around lyrics and you don't have any, it's just gonna take longer to generate. So if you have lyrics, use the lyrics model. If you don't have lyrics, don't use the lyrics model. Simple enough. Now we're gonna go to mode. This is primed. You have primed and ancestral. Like I said, these are up to user preference. You can try generating with both of these and they'll give you just a little bit of a different tone or a bit of a different stylization depending on the one you're using. Personally, I like primed. That's just my preference. Now we're gonna go up to HPS samples 
and HPS name. HPS samples is basically how many samples you want generated. I'm going to go ahead and just put this to one because that's going to take a lot less time and a lot less memory for the GPU inside of Notebook. Next we have HPS name. You can think of this as your output folder. So we can actually go ahead and create a new folder on this generation inside of our Google Drive and we'll just name this jukebox gen. So when you go to your drive, when this is done, this will all be stored inside of the folder that you're now making called jukebox gen. Speed up sampling, do you want it to go faster? Do you want it to go slower? Heck, I don't see why you would have that unchecked, so we're just gonna leave that checked. This right here is the next section, audio file, and this is why we actually set up this right here where we uploaded this. We're gonna go ahead and right click this and click copy path. You can think of the path as where it is finding your sample. So inside of our files on our computer, we've uploaded this to create a path. So we're gonna copy that path, we're gonna hover over this, just control V and paste that in there. Now we're gonna get to two things, prompt length in seconds and sample length in seconds. You can think of your prompt in this case as your audio file or your initial init. If you're familiar with init or input, that's what your audio file is here. Likewise, your output is gonna be HPS name. So this is where you want it to start generating. So let's just say that we wanna start generating at five seconds. We wanna sample the first five seconds of our uploaded file, and then from there, we wanna give Jukebox some creative freedom. Sample length in seconds is just gonna be how long do you want it? <clears throat> To save time, let's go ahead and just put 20. So at five seconds, we're gonna start giving it artistic freedom. At 20 seconds, it will end. Here we can go select artist. You can see it defaults to the Beatles, but if we click this, um, there should be a drop down. Okay, this one does not have the drop down, but you can basically just select an artist. Now for my generation, I did uh, Eurythmics because I, would just, I, I just thought that would be fun. If you're unfamiliar with the Eurythmics, they make, they're made rather some uh, really fun music uh, a couple decades ago. But let's go ahead and select genre. Uh, let's go ahead and select trance. We can type in trance. And sampling texture is going to basically be your version of a control net. How close to your audio file input is this going to follow? A 98 or a 99 is going to follow it very, very closely and give it very little artistic freedom. The max here is gonna be a one. That means 100% basically. You can think of this in percentages, 100%, 99%, 98%. However it clicks better in your brain, that's what we want to go with just the larger the number or the closer to one the closer this is going to follow your prompt or the init file we of course have some information about the gpus that you'll be sampling from and some information about the different options such as speed up sampling uh, hps samples and prompt length in seconds all right so that's really it. If we want lyrics, we can upload our lyrics and of course switch back to the 5B lyrics model. But right now, we're gonna just go to the top and click on runtime, and we're gonna click on run all. It's gonna give you a little bit of a warning, but we're just gonna click run anyway. And then we're gonna click connect to Google Drive. Once we've allowed it to connect to Google Drive, it is going to start running. You'll know what section is running based on this swirling icon. You'll know if you have an error if this swirling icon turns red. Now, this generation at 20 seconds may take about half an hour to 45 minutes to actually generate. One thing that is cool though, is you can always log into different Google accounts, open different windows, and create multiple generations running side by side. On a local install, this would most likely overload your computer as you'd be trying to make different generatives all on top of each other using your own hardware. The beauty of the collab notebook is every time you load into this, you're gonna be using a different GPU. You can see here that it's going to load a GPU whenever you run this initial cell. Every time you go into a new notebook, you're gonna be assigned a different GPU. In this case, we're assigned the Tesla T4 GPU, but you can 
run multiple generations as you're going to be running multiple different GPUs on Google's backend, not your own local hardware. Once this is done, your file will go into Google Drive. Let me drag this over so you can see it better. Um, we have the Google Drive here and you could see that we actually had one, two generatives for this. So our sample was set to two. You can see it's a very small file, only two MB. Uh, and we have it right here where we can download it or we can choose to just play it. Uh, it says there was an issue. Let's go ahead and open it with a media player. Now, this was sampling the first five seconds and the rest is generative so the first five seconds is going to be from our sample specifically and then the next is going to be basically you can think of this as a generative fill it's going to take what you told it along with other parameters and then generate from there let's go ahead and give it a listen And then it kind of just eerily fades out. But that is that. That is Jukebox with OpenAI, an AI tool that nobody seems to be talking about. If you want to know how to locally install this on your own computer and task your own hardware to death, let me know. I'm still currently learning that. I'm stuck inside that PyCharm terminal working out errors to make sure it's running thoroughly and smoothly. But I haven't seen any other tutorials on this, so I wanted to get this really on the ground up and running so you could at least start playing with it. If you found this helpful, go ahead and smash the like button, and if you want to support the channel for free, subscribe. We are launching multiple AI tool tutorials every single week. We're never going to try and sell you a course or pitch you anything, but we're just going to be here to try and help. If you want to learn more about AI, you can check out one of the two videos on your screen now. The one on the left is by far my favorite thing you can do with AI right now, as we can take a simple image from Midjourney and create an entire 3D environment, which we can then load into something like a Unity engine and just start creating games. It's really limitless what we can do with AI right now, and I hope you'll stick around to have some fun.